I do get strange requests. A good example is in Get Swifty. There's like this alien band that's competing against Earth. All I saw was just this sort of like rough drawing of these aliens playing what appeared to be alien instruments, right? What does that mean? How is that supposed to sound? I just kind of just took stuff from all different areas of the world and threw it in a pot together and then put a weird goofy synth part on top. You know, they sort of let me do what I want to do. They just go, eh, let Elder take care of it and then we'll, we'll give them feedback. I'm Ryan Elder, I'm the composer for TV's Rick and Morty, Boss Baby Back in Business, and Harmon Quest. Before I started working on Rick and Morty, I was mainly a composer for advertising. In 2005, my wife pointed out a website called channel101.com, and Dan Harmon is the founder of Channel 101. I knew these guys are super funny, they're making really cool stuff, I want to get involved. So I got involved with Channel 101. When they sold Rick and Morty, I had already worked with them on so many things that it was just sort of like, yeah, we work together. We're going to do this together. So. There's actually an interesting story behind the theme song. I originally wrote that theme song for another pitch for a different show. Justin came up with this animated show called Dog World. It's like an alternate universe Earth where dogs are people and they have humans as pets. And uh, he wanted this like epic sci-fi score and he sent me some references, Farscape theme song, you know, of course, Doctor Who. And I sort of created this sort of long building orchestral synthy sci-fi-ish adventure kind of a track. My name is Peter Michaels. While on a camping trip with my brother Edmund and sister Sally, we were sucked through some kind of wormhole and transported to another world. Dog world. That show didn't go anywhere, long story short. And when we were working on Rick and Morty, we were like, oh, we need a theme song. We need just something to put on the pilot. I said to Justin, I know you love that dog world theme song. Why don't we put that on here for now? And as time went on, we just were like, you know what? Everybody likes it. Let's go with this, you know? I barely changed it from one to the other. Hey, listen, I know this is your world, not mine. The sooner I can get out, the sooner I can go back to taking big craps and you can go back to subsisting on them. So the process for scoring an animated show, it's definitely different than live action. Generally speaking, I get what's called an animatic. It's kind of pencil drawings in sort of a slideshow format. And that's always set to what they call a radio play, which is the dialogue all fully recorded and edited out. For Rick and Morty, it's not tempt, so there's no music on the animatic at all. And I get to decide where the music goes. A lot of the shows have two, three minute action sequences towards the end. So I will oftentimes start with that to sort of get the idea of what kind of themes I'm gonna be using in that episode that I can start introducing earlier in the episode. And I tend to kind of overscore it. So I'll do, I'll say this scene needs music when I maybe know at the end of the day it might not be there, but I'd rather have it done now than at the last minute them saying, can you add music to this scene? <laughs> so, you know, normally I would have some picture to work to or something, but in this case I'm trying to pre-score. I'm trying to write something ahead of time so that I have it ready to go when I need it. And in this case, I'm, I wanted kind of an emotional piece of music. So with this track, I started with a sort of a simple piano and a little bit of an analog strings pad in there. And then I wanted kind of a cool vocal sound that had like a Sigur Ross kind of a vibe. So I got Exhale up here, of course. That kind of doubles the piano uh, as it goes through and kind of gives it a nice texture. So right now it just repeats after that. And that's where I want to sort of bring in some new elements, some percussion, some interesting sounds and stuff. So the first thing I want to do is I want to mess around with some signal here actually. So there's like a synth sound in here that I kind of like, but I want to like take some of the high end. Rick and Morty isn't the most sort of what they call Mickey Mouse show. It's not a lot of hits 
where every little thing is like hit in the music here, 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 every little eyebrow raise. Rick and Morty, there's a lot of more tone setting, longer drawn out storytelling instead of trying to tell every little thing. There's no such thing as an Uncle Steve. That is an alien parasite. <laughs> My favorite episode to work on is also just my favorite episode of the show, which is the Parasites episode, where the family isn't sure of all these kooky characters if they're parasites or not. I just think it's like one of the most genius half hours of television I've ever seen. I love all these kooky characters. And then there's this big action sequence at the end, which is intercut with scenes where there is no action. They're going back and forth between like people's memories and this big action sequence. So it's really fun to figure out how to like frame that action and have it be able to stop for these scenes in people's memories where they realize they have no bad memories of the parasite. So I'm going from like this heinous, bloody killing to these memories that are happy. They're happy memories by default. So it was fun to sort of figure out how to go back and forth with that. And yeah, that's my favorite episode and was probably the most fun to work on. I really want to get some percussion in here. I've been messing around with some arcade. There's this after hours kit, which has some cool sounds in it. Sound pretty good at my tempo, which is uh, 100. All right, I know I want that basically, all, uh, for now I want it all the way throughout, so I'm just gonna go ahead and extend that out. All right, let's move on to a different uh, arcade instance here. So I got this particles line, which I love because it's got these like crazy cool like textures. These are not like take center stage type sounds, but you know, you need this kind of fairy dust to make a track like really pop sometimes. I think this might be cool with uh, that sort of marimba e kind of sound I have coming from the signal. Let's just try it every four bars, just like a little tasty little thing in there every so often. Cool. All right, that's something. My favorite song I've written for the show is Goodbye Moon Men, by far. Uh, getting to work with Jermaine Clement, one total dream come true. I'm a huge fan of his. He's an awesome guy and he nailed it on the first take. And then, you know, I'm a huge David Bowie fan. Having to listen to a bunch of David Bowie to get in the mindset to do that song was like the most fun I've ever had <laughs> working on anything. I just picked up my guitar and started strumming and singing and it just kind of wrote itself from beginning to end. And it's so heavily featured in the episode, which I, you know, most of the music I write for the show is in the background. So having something with vocals and lyrics like right in front like that, really, really exciting. Goodbye. Generally, the music that we license, the music that exists out in the world already, songs like, like you said, the Nine Inch Nails song, those songs are chosen well in advance of when I get involved, usually. So I know what we're leading up to, and they're almost always like a big key moment at the end of the episode. Another example is the Chaos Chaos song that we used at the end of an episode where Rick tries to commit suicide. I need to absolutely not step on that moment by creating anything that's gonna outshine that moment. And uh, I can lead up to that. There's a cue right before that where Rick is reading a letter that Unity has written him where she's basically breaking up with him. I am really proud of that music I did for that scene, but I knew that if I did something that was too big or too important or too like scene stealing, that it would overshadow the Chaos Chaos song. So my goal at that point is just like tee it up and let them, you know, get the hole in one. I was gonna, I wanna mess around with this one, the crate. So I pulled up this like opera singer. I'm gonna try to feather it in here and see what happens. This is cool, but it's like taking up a lot of space right now because it's like a full recording of a full performance. So I want to try to thin it. And put some low pass. I can assign this to like the mod wheel 
here. I'm going to adjust it on the fly. Now that we're working on season four, the sound of the show, the template, the orchestration has already been sort of firmly decided over the years. So now it's kind of like I just load up the instruments I know are going to work, the sounds that I like, and uh, I just start figuring out how they're going to score to the picture. Is there anything you can tell us? Uh, <laughs> I can't tell you anything about season four other than what I've seen is amazing. It's on par, if not better than the previous episodes. I think people are gonna be very, very excited when it comes out. There's gonna be some real, real crazy episodes. I'll just say that. Cool. So uh, now I would say, you know, ready to be uh, mixed and mastered. <laughs>